you think August was an outlier month as we as things kind of get back to normal here, or, or was it just because the data was strong, or there's more, I guess, optimism than usual about China trade talks today? Yeah, well, it's it's day to day, right? I mean. August wasn't that bad, and we're having a heck of a year already year to date, if you look at the numbers. And even on a trailing one year basis, we're up about 7, 8 uh, percent since the trade rhetoric sort of heated up. So I, I think expect continued volatility. We sort of view volatility as our friend, where we can go in and pick off great names at discount prices. But I, I think until the trade deal is settled, and I really think until President Trump decides whether or not being tough on China, is his election um, nugget or coming to a deal mm -hmm. is the election nugget. I think we're going to continue to see this sort of fickle response um, to trade from him and in the market. Right. And while stocks are moving around, as we mentioned, the bond yields have companies rushing in. I mean, this week we've had a ton of issuance, which right. is normal this time of year, but this is even more than normal. So Apple's going to issue debt for the first time in a couple of years. Yep. We're talking about record low 30 year corporate debt for John Deere, which is in sort of a, a right. harder hit part of the market right now. You like a lot of technology names. What is your thought in general? Is that all of this uh, borrowing a good or a, are we setting itself up for a sort of problems down the road here? I don't think so because rates are so low, Kelly. I mean, it, I just look at what you do personally or what I do. I say, well, if I can earn more than 2.9% on my money, I'm going to invest it and maybe I might borrow. I, I don't recommend that. But I do think it's good for manufacturing because you have United Airlines saying they're going to buy some planes. It's good for the market because Apple's likely to be buying back stock and, and share buybacks have slowed down. So I, I think net net it's a positive as long as debt servicing remains in the in a normal-ish sure. kind of range. I, Michael, what do you think? Yeah, I, I agree that it's a positive that companies are finding ready buyers at these low yields. It tells you the capital markets are still in a relatively flush position. And it also mitigates a little bit the message that investors were taking from the extreme lows in government bond yields, right? If you looked at the Treasury market and said, wow, it's saying something scary about the course of the economy going ahead, the fact that corporate uh, issuers are able to actually uh, refinance their debt or finance buybacks or new projects, and essentially investment-grade corporate debt in the United States is now down pretty close to the lows for the cycle, well under 3 percent as an average yield. So it does tell you that there's a positive. It's also a prop to equity valuations. It's, you know, one of the inputs into how much would you pay for a dollar of earnings in the stock market is, you know, what is the uh, the debt levels? And that's yeah. a hurdle, right? So I do think it's a positive until it becomes a negative, which is when the market <laughs> seizes up, but we don't see that. Well, yet. we're showing the high yield chart there, Nancy, and that's where you would, you would expect high yield debt to perform poorly if the economy was weakening and instead it's been strong. Um, so that's one way to kind of watch and see whether this slowdown is happening or not. So on the Federal Reserve, I thought markets might be a little bit more upset that the better data today or the positive news on trade would, would lessen the chance of future rate cuts. They seem to be shrugging that off. Yeah, I think, I think a 25 base point cuts in. I think the market's demanding it. it. The market's really demanding a 50 basis point cut. If you just look at where we are globally, our short rate is, our Fed funds rate is the highest rate in the world. I think, I think the government might take a page out of corporate America's books and issue some long debt at these levels and bring down our debt servicing costs. I mean, right. we could save hundreds of billions of dollars a month.